Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room. And today we are going to take totes that I already have and use them as a pattern to make our own totes. No, we're not, we're really not gonna do that. Shh, don't say anything. I am the world's worst procrastinator. And I do need to do this video because the holidays are coming up. You know, we all need last minute gifts to be made for the holidays. But, you know, again, last minute. It's not the last minute yet. Is it the day before you have to give somebody a gift? Mm, maybe, but it isn't for me. So what I wanna do is a quilt. The quilt that I want to make is, you know, a panel. I always use a panel. But this particular quilt is going to use a panel and make it look like it isn't a panel. So let's get started. I have this lovely yellow flower. And this is called Fields of Gold. But I don't want this to look like I took a panel, put some borders around it, and made a quilt which is essentially what we're going to do, but we're going to cut this panel up in order to make it look less like a panel, which might be kind of painful for some of you. And I'm going to share with you, oh, wait a minute, she's coming. Mm. So we're gonna take that tote bag and we're going to trace this pattern. You're working on that tote right? Because we need to get that done. I'm working on the tote bag tutorial. The holidays are coming up really quickly. <clears throat> yep, I'm getting it done. Mm-hmm. I, I, and not everyone likes to wait until the last minute like you do. I know, I, yes, I, I understand. So please work on the tote. I, I hope you're doing the video on the tote. We need the tote bag. We need those 12 projects for Christmas gifts. Okay, see you later. All right, back to the room. So we're going to cut up this panel and put some coordinating fabric and kind of almost make it look like a window. And with that being said, I'm going to share my blasphemy in one of the panels that I cut up. This is, I know that you all don't know who this is, so I'm going to explain it. This is the Grinch. Now, some people will be appalled at what I did with the Grinch, but I'm going to share it anyway. You see, I have this panel, so I did have a backup in case my plan didn't work. Warning, there is graphic content in this video. So if you don't want to see the Grinch sliced up, don't watch. Now think window. It's not that bad, right? He's looking out a window. You can still see him. And it doesn't look like a panel. Mission accomplished. Now you don't have to use a panel. You can also just use fabric that has a design that you like. And that's what I did with this. This is just one big piece of fabric, just like that. I actually cut one piece at about, I think 24 inches. Yeah, 24 inches. And then just cut it up just like I did the Grinch. So the plan is to take this panel and cut it up. And then I'm going to put 
a fabric that coordinates with it in between the blocks. On the others, and I plan to do the same thing with this one, I ended up with six blocks. I'm going to take this basic gray grunge and that is what is going to be in between the blocks of my panel. Then I want to have a solid on the outside around the whole panel that's got the, let's say, window feature. I am going to use this Dai Wabo from E.E. E. Schneck. Sure, I didn't say that right. It's an ombre, but I think it will just be a great addition to this quilt. Then I'm going to use a charm pack. I also have some of the coordinates that go with this particular collection. And I will use these as borders or possibly binding. Let's see what happens. I am just going to fold this in half and then I'm going to fold it again. So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to make sure it's lined up. And then I'm just going to cut a little bitty strip along this fold. So now I have two 12 inch strips. And this is what I've done with the others as well. This is longer than 36 inches, but I have a lot here that as pretty as it is, I'm going to cut it off. I know I told you this is going to be painful. So what I'm going to do is measure and see where exactly I want to cut it so that I, I don't lose the pretty flowers in the middle. I'm just going to lose some of the extra that's on the corners. I don't have a backup for this, so if I mess this up, I'm going to have to order it from sewing at Golden Threads. And I will leave a link as to where I picked this up. It's a little shop in Trenton, Kentucky. They're wonderful. Send a lot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my blocks like they're going to look so that you can still see the original panel. It just doesn't look like the original panel. We're going to take the grunge fabric that I'm going to use as the strips in between and we're going to cut it into two inch strips. So that means that we will have about a one and a half inch strip in between each of our blocks. The first thing that I'm going to do is run an iron over these particular, all these panel pieces. And then I'm going to add a strip to the right hand side of the block on the left and I can chain piece these together and then cut them apart. Once you've sewn your strip onto your panel piece, then you are going to press it. Again, this is pressing, not ironing. And you want to press it in such a way that this part is pressed against the strip and that makes it easier to cut. Here I have my strips with my panel pieces. I'm going to take my little ruler, line it up along the edge of this panel piece and get a straight cut. Do not sew your strip to the outside of the block because you can just take one long strip when you get these inside blocks sewn together. But I've already sewn it on there and I'm not gonna rip it out. So what you do is you take your two panel pieces and you sew them together. 
I'm going to cut these strips off the edges and sew them here and here and here. So what I have now are three separate pieces of my window panes and I'm just going to connect them together. So the middle piece has borders all the way around. So now I will flip this over. I will connect it to this piece. And then when I get done with that, I will connect this piece and I will have my center. That's wrong. Make sure you keep your panel pieces in order. Here is our window pane panel. We are going to take this ombre fabric and I'm going to cut strips and add it around the outside. And then we're gonna take a charm pack. This border is just a little bigger or longer than my window pane. I want to go from light in the middle to dark on the ends. So I am going to put it in the middle so it goes a little past this end and a little past this end. So I get that ombre look. I now have a strip on either side of my panel. What I'll do is I just center this. I just take this seam and kind of eyeball it in the center and then I will sew it this way. And I will do the same for the bottom. Now we get to the fun part, and that's where we pull in the good old charm pack. The great thing about this charm pack is it has a sample of every one of the fabrics from this collection. So even though I don't have all the larger fabrics or any yardage from this collection, I've got a little piece of every piece of fabric from this collection. And what I'm going to do is sew these together, make a big border, and put it all the way around. I'm just going to intermingle them. I'm not going to even think about what order they're in. I'm just going to put them together and see what happens. So let's see what happens. Now we are going to press our big long strip and then we will attach it to one side of the quilt and then do another strip, attach it, another strip, attach it until we're done. I have now added my charm square border to the whole thing. I wanted to show you what I did because what I thought I was going to do has totally changed. I decided with this charm pack border that I wanted a break in between the different fabrics that are in the collection and the next border. So what I did was I took my ombre that I used on this inner border and I cut it at two and a half inches. And I did it differently than I normally do a border. I started on the side just like I always do. And I also put two strips together before I started, just like I always do. But instead of doing both side, both long sides first and then the top, I decided I wanted my ombre to go from dark to light to dark to light to dark to light. So I just did it as I came to it. So here I go from dark to light, back to dark, back to light, and then I kept that going. Just wanted to show you that. You don't always have to do your borders the same way. I thought that would be kind of a, a fun visual effect for this quilt.
my quilt top is complete and it's huge. I actually didn't even put on the last border that I was planning on putting on because this guy got big quick. So just remember, you can take a panel and make it look like, uh, I'm going to say window. You can take just regular fabric that you like, cut it up and make it look like it's a window. Or you can, you know, cut the Grinch's face in half and make it look like he's looking through a window. I might rethink doing the uh, Grinch cut in half again. You could always just put his little face in its own little square. But you know, it's for the shock effect, right? Grinch's face cut in half. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you taking out the time. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. Have a great day, be kind to everyone. And I said that out of order. A little, what's the word? Hmm. Holy crap, what is that? I'll be using this and I just said that. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. That's really helpful, right?